at the open forum this year, I had the pleasure of watching the presentation by Scott Fawcett explaining his encore strategy. Those of you who have not seen or heard Scott, do yourself a favor and follow him on Twitter or email him for additional information regarding his programs. Scott's considerable math and analytical skills have led him to the importance for definitive encore strategies. As part of Scott's analytics, he uses Google Maps to visualize and measure actual driving distances based on his research as well as tour shot link data. I recently had five juniors competing in a tournament and I thought I would try to employ some of Scott's wisdom for each junior based on their personal driver carry and roll distances. Since each were going off at a different tee time, I made a map of each hole and using Google Earth, loosely based on Scott's research. The success was immediate as all of my players scored better than their handicaps and one of my 14 year olds took second place and had his first tournament round under par. I thought the rest of the world could likewise benefit so I made this video to show you the steps taken in making the maps. For this video I have assumed a 65 yard dispersion for a plus handicap at 300 yards and within that cone a smaller 40 yard control area. I've also included 270 and 240 yard distances. For the map, I chose the 2017 US Open venue at Aaron Hills. These are the 14 par fours or par fives at Aaron Hills. The par threes are not de depicted. The cones, as it relates to the ground, are all 300 yards long. And it is very easy to see on an individual hole whether or not a 270 yard shot is going to hit a bunker. If you know anything about Scott's system, he has determined that even PGA Tour players have a 65 yard minimum dispersion ratio on their drives. So you can take this each individual map, look at hole number four, and you can see that if you hit it 300 yards, you've got a good chance of going in that bunker depending on your dispersion ratio. On hole five, I put two different cones there just in case t different tees are used. At this point in the video, you can continue and watch how I made the maps, or you can just go to the description, and inside the description of this video, I will put a link to the actual Aaron Hills map. Initially, find a place in my documents where you can store all your work. I named a folder, um, called Decade, which is the name of Scott's playing lesson system. And um, after I did that, I went into, opened up Google Earth. Google Earth is free, and I think that you can go in and download it. It's a little bit more robust than Google Maps, and it has the ability to add overlays. Once the program opens, you can type in the search bar. I typed in Aaron Hills. It's very intuitive and it found um, Aaron Hill's golf course pretty quickly. Um, it did the search and it zooms right into the golf course. Now it's best at this time to go ahead and save this as a My Places thing. I already have it saved, but if you go up in here to File, Save As, you can save as My Places and it'll give a file which you can then designate that it goes into the decade folder and then you can go back and find it very quickly and it'll save all your work in my places. So this is the venue for the 2017 US Open. So I initially start by finding a nice blank area on the screen with something you know kind of an area where I can get an idea of um, geometry and I go in and initially lay out, open up the ruler, and then I take the ruler, and for this project, I decided to lay out a 65-yard distance line in Google Maps. So I took the 65-yard thing here, made it close to, close to 65 yards as I can get. Then Google has a, Google Maps has a way of putting in a, a placeholder. So you can go in here, name the, pay, the placeholder, and then you can go in and choose which, you know, a, a different format. I choose one that's easier for me to find the exact point of the line. So I take that placeholder, put it in there, say okay. 
Now it will save it in the left hand column over there and you can then open it and you can copy it and make a complete copy and paste of the same thing and it'll put a duplicate right in there. Then when you go down to properties on the second copy, you can go down and makes a copy and you can go put it right at the end of the line. So those two placeholders actually make a 65 yard line and they are actually attached to the Google Earth image. So now from that, I will take, I will get rid of the line and then I'm going to go ahead and put the 40 yard line in now so I can get that out of the way and get an actual, you know, something close to 40 yards for this demonstration. Then I go ahead, put another placeholder in that so I can mark the end of the line. So when my when the ruler goes away and the line is marked there, I change the name and make it 40. And then I go up to the top, clear everything, and now I'm going to go ahead and make a 30 yard, I mean a 300 yard cone. So go back, take ruler, start at the base of the 65 yard dispersion placeholder, and I go out trying to keep it equal distance from both 65 yard placeholders. And I find an area that's approximately 300 yards, close as it can get with my mouse control. And then I'll go ahead and put another placeholder there. And for that placeholder, I'll rename it 300. And then I'll take the placeholder, click on it, and move it over to the end of the line. So now it's actually made, it's actually attached to Google Earth and it's measuring 300 yards from that other placeholder. Now I'll take a line just to double check to make sure that the other 65 marker is approximately 300 yards and clear that out. Now to measure 270 yards, I'll take a line, put it generally in line until it gets out for the 65 yard holder to generally gets out to about 270 yards. And then I will go ahead and place it there, put a placeholder in there so I can mark the spot, rename it 270, put the placeholder as close as I can to the end of the line. I'll go back and draw another line, clear that one, draw another line in the general area of the other 65 yard north marker at 270, find where that point is in line. Put another placeholder there. Google Earth on the left hand side of the screen, Google Earth, every time you put a placeholder in there, Google Earth has a radio button in there where you can turn it on and off up on the left hand side and you can copy and paste similar placeholders. Now I'm taking the 240 yard marker just generally putting it in line with the, with the 300 and the 270 and marking out the 240 yard possible hybrid distance and putting a placeholder on that spot close as I can get. Move down, put another one at the bottom in the same line to using the same method keeping it at general cone shaped. At this point of the video, I won't bore you with how I take these. I take a capture of this image right here with all of the numbers on it. And then I take it inside of Photoshop. And um, if you look in the background, you can see a sped up version of how I put it in Photoshop and then make a transparent cone with the same dimensions, approximate dimensions of the 300, 270, 240. But for all the users here that want to see it, I will put an actual overlay image of the cone inside of the descriptions with a link to it. And you can actually, if you want to make your own maps, you can go ahead and use the cone. And you can, once you set up these distance triangles, you can actually put in the distance um, that you want for your uh, specific need. For my kids, I have one uh, junior that hits a 265. I have another junior that hits a 250. So I make the cones the right size, appropriate size for them.
you can now go into where you saved your image and go up into the file section of Google Earth and you can add the image overlay. So what I do is you go into add image overlay, you go find it where you put the image that you got out of the description here or if you created your own and it will automatically insert into your map, preferably insert it over top of where you put your original markers when you decided. Rename it something that is appropriate for you depending on the size of the, the cone that you're going to use. Now if you click on it, when you renamed it, you click on it and you go to properties, it will open up these green handles so that you can move the image around in the screen. When you're initially doing this, if you grab the corners, you can resize the image. So grab the center, move it approximately near where you're going to be, and then you move the corners to get it exactly onto the, the markers that we made initially for the 65 yards dispersion and approximately at 300 yards. Center the cone. Now, once you get this set up, depending on the yardage that you decide when you're making the map, once you get it set up and it actually inserted into Google Maps, you only ever move the center right there. You only ever move the center because it will actually distort the image. Once it's placed inside of Google Earth, it is um, geometrically correct in size every time you move it. At this point I normally go in and turn off the markers so that they don't continue to show up in Google Maps. Now zoom out in Google Maps where you can see the entire golf course plus you can see your image overlay in the upper right. If you click on the image overlay which is um, which you renamed over on the left and you grab the center you can now bring it onto the golf course where you would like to start laying out your maps for this this is the first hole of Aaron Hills and I'm going to generally grab this cor this diamond shape here and that rotates it as I said earlier do not grab the ends because it will distort the actual size of the map. Now here I'm, I found the first the first T or the longest T whether or not they use that is a you can see from this um, the example that back T to the fairway at Aaron Hills is a long way so whether or not they use that for all the rounds but for this example I have placed that into on the map so that it's angled into the fairway so that the 40 yard width is approximately the fairway and you can see the 65 foot 65 yard dispersion ratio where that cone goes now i'll go in and i'll make a copy of that so that i can i can move it around to a different hole and all you have to do there is right click on the um, image and say copy and place, it'll place one directly on top of the other image that you had. You can then turn off the other image. So what I do is I place a cone, I go to each T um, on each hole and I will orient the cone based on the, based on the correct driving area. And it's pretty easy to see in this hole with this number second, the second hole of Aaron Hills, that that bunker on the right, on the north side of the is is um, pretty well placed for a 270 yard shot. As I put the cones down on the Google Earth map, I rename them so that I can go back in and click later or just to see which ones I want. On some holes, I will actually put two cones, um, depending on the first tee or you know, do, you want, do I want the middle tee or the back tee? And um, because I'm sure that the course designers have set it up, they can be used differently each day. Now I'm going to go through and put a cone at every hole and rename them. Now I go in and I zoom out on the map, and as you can see, I have a cone at every hole on the golf course. Now I go in and I rotate the map so I can look at each individual hole and try to size it up to fit 
on when I take a little image of the shot. So now I'm at the first hole. I have, um, you can see that I've actually put two cones in there, one a second shot cone. And I'm going into the um, snipper tool, the snipping tool, which is part of Windows. If you go into your, it, it's part of all Windows. And I'll go in here and I'll take a picture of the hole um, right here and I'll size it up approximately that so that it fits into the hole. I mean, it fits into the screen. And it doesn't matter what size you're doing this because you're only going to use this as an image. Now, there's the image that I snipped. I'm going to save it as, I'm going to save it into my decade folder and I'm going to call it hole one. And then I'm going to go through each one of these um, holes and I'm going to save the image and rename it one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. I now go back into Photoshop and I make a image size approximately the size of a sheet of paper. And then I will go back in. This is an example of um, cone I did for a previous um, course. And I will insert each one of those pictures inside of Photoshop. It's, um, you can watch me do it here, but that, this is just an example of how I do it. I'll bring in all of the images into Photoshop. I go in there, I copy, paste, insert, and then I'll put them in there. Now, for this example, in my previous um, maps, I have numbered the holes, so it makes it much easier. On this image, all I am doing is taking the holes that have cones in them, and the cones are the only holes. I don't do part threes um, for this. This is a driving map, and um, it's a strategy map of where to drive the ball. Once I have all the images in there, then I will actually save it as a JPEG and um, I will take a, a picture of the entire map and um, color it, play with it so that it's easily shown up and um, when the kids take it out on the course. Here's a copy of the completed Aaron Hills uh, map. I have taken the, um, I made some put some logos and stuff on the side, um, put some text in there, so a description of what golf course it is, so in case I lose it. I have also um, defined the size of the cone, 300, 270, 240, and um, it's very easy to fold in half and fits right inside of a uh, scorebook. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any comments, um, questions, just leave them in the comment section. I'll try to get to them. Thank you very much.